Good afternoon. My name is Ari Goldberg here on WZMB Greenville 91.3 on your FM dial. Free format for Eastern Carolina. So we have a very special feature Friday for you this week. I'm here with singer-songwriter Sonia. She'll be playing later tonight a house show here in Greenville, but she stopped by to uh, say hi to us and to play a set. Okay. Hey. So we, um, Sonia's a singer-songwriter from Baltimore, and I, I found this out. This is very interesting, and I, I want to make sure we talk about this first. You have a guitar named after you? I do, I do. Um, this wonderful guitar company, uh, wonderful people, Santa Cruz Guitar Company um, out in Santa Cruz, California. I played one of their, their guitars, gosh, I don't know, about a long time ago, in the, sometime in the early 90s, and fell in love with it. And it was just kind of different. And so um, we were talking to the guy who's in charge of the company. His name is Richard Hoover. And he said, well, when you're out in Santa Cruz, just you know, come out in the afternoon, and I'll give you a tour. And he loves making guitars, and he um, uses woods that are not... Um, well, the, he doesn't chop down any trees. <laughs> no, no new growth um, uh, d dies for, for these guitars. These are all made of old wood, so that in the final product, it's a really nice, warm um, sound. And, uh, and I, I just love it. I just, uh, so, yeah, they surprised me with it. Some people were calling and, and asking um, or contacting them about having a Sonia model, just like my guitar. And he's like, well, let's just make one. So, uh, so that's what they did. They just, he just stylized the one that he had made for me. And, uh, yeah, and so I love it. And I use that completely. I use I have two Sonia guitars that I use on the new uh, upcoming CD. Well, I, I got to say, it's a very big deal when any, anybody names anything after you. I'm still, I'm still trying to get even a sandwich named after me. <laughs> hey, wait, I, uh, that's another thing. On the new CD, I have a song called Ari Ari. Uh, well, it, it, usually in my experience, the, the answer to that crossword puzzle clue is about Leon Uris, not about me. <laughs> Well, uh, let, let's, uh, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe we'll change. Maybe we'll change all that. We'll make history. And, and you know, a a after you play this song, excuse me about the, the, next, the next song being Ari, 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 uh, after this song, I think we're going to do the rest of the interview in Yiddish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, would, you, would you play us a song on your, on your Sonia guitar? I will. I will. Um, let's do this one. Because it's Friday. And because the stock market was doing weird things. This is called The Banker. Not a bank, it's a banker Not a paper, not a symbol Not a building, not a bubble Just some fancy human beings Not a bank, it's a banker Not a paper, not a symbol Not a building, not a bubble Just some fancy human beings This is the story of a middleman's life Loved baseball, bowling, and banging his wife. And they had two children, Rick and Jane. And they shared their love, kissed away the pain. And every day the bills came in. Middleman paid the best he can. Gave the banker all of his skin 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 Middleman believed in free will No, the credit card is not a magic pill And when they found a house, the bank said buy it Unaware of the banker's insatiable diet And every day the bills come in Money became his true religion There's not one law protecting him Cause he gave the banker all of his skin Gave the banker all of his skin How did the banker reward him? Raised his rate to three times ten Now the holy bank of Taj Mahal 
bank of the royal untouchables. Raining in this rain of selfish goals And stole the American middleman's soul And every day the bills came in Middleman paid the best he can He gave the banker all of his skin 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 Middleman had not a greedy hand He was an honest Joe like a camel suit man But he lost his job and mama got thin when they took his house, turned to a life of sin He held up Rahid at the local store When I win my millions, I'll pay you back more But that day God forgot to keep score And middleman died in a puddle on the floor Gave the banker all of his skin, gave the banker all of his skin. How did the banker reward him? Raised his rate to three times ten. Not a bank, it's a banker. Not a paper, not a symbol. Not a building, not a bubble. Just some bad sea human beings. Not a bank, it's a banker. Not a paper, not a symbol. Not a building. Just some bad seed human beings Not a bank, it's a banker Not a paper, not a symbol Not a building, not a bubble Just some bad seed human beings Not a bank, it's a banker Not a paper, not a symbol Not a building, not a bubble Just some bad seed human beings Ladies and gentlemen, Sonia with The Banker from her new, uh, her forthcoming CD. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we were uh, talking earlier before we started, you have an album of Phil Oaks covers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Made it um, with my sister out in uh, San Jose, California. And um, it's just really just me and Cindy, the harmonies of, of that and um, uh, reminiscent of the early days of Disappear Fear. And... And uh, my guitar, my Santa Cruz. <laughs> yeah. uh, on on that CD, you you put in because of the night, and I was wondering why um, why throw in a little Springsteen. Well, the song that Phil wrote is a song called "I've Had Her," and it's a beautiful, beautiful song. But the ultimate answer in that song, after it seems like he exhausts like I don't know eight or eleven uh, possibilities of of life in a, in a, with someone in a relationship that goes bad. Um, the answer for Phil Oaks was suicide, and I didn't, don't, didn't and don't um, feel that that is the answer. So I lightened it up with um, Because the Night, because Bruce Springsteen is able to go to that edge in, in the song, and, 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 you, and you go there with him, but you don't have to jump over. You can just, you can, you can just take it all. Um, so he'd sort of just like... It, it, musically, it just worked, and I and I thought lyrically, it it, it worked. It, it's just, it's surprising. I really came into it not intentionally. I didn't sit down to like, okay, how can we fix the song? Because I don't do that. <laughs> I love the Phil Oak songs pretty much the way they are. But I was just playing it, and it and it just kind of went went into that that chord progression, and I was like, wow, this this actually works. So yeah. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to mention on air uh, what, what we talked about. Phil Oaks was also not. Uh, Adverse to lightening things up. You can find an album called The Broadside Tapes where he'll do a cover of Saw Her Standing There. It's, it's very it, very cool. I, I imagine it's hard to find, but 
I'm going to try and look for it now. Uh, I had the I had access to the album before at, at a different radio station I worked for. Um, so maybe maybe my my old friends there will send me a copy. Cool, cool. Yeah, there's there's some really good obscure stuff um, out out around him um, about him. The interview with like Dick Cavett, I think, and just some really cool weird stuff. <laughs> uh, there's, all, there's always good stuff on the Dick Cavett show. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, well, we'll come back to it when um, when Jimmy Cagney revealed that he speaks fluent Yiddish. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was on the Dick Cavett show. I did not know that. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Do uh, you do you speak um, Yiddish? Oh. Ich rette ein bisschen die Mama Loschel. Ah! Ich bin ein Yeshiva-Bacher. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I can't even come. I think I can. Um, a bissel, a bissel, a bissel. <laughs> very, very little for me. But um, but I love it. And, you know, I've, I've done some tours now uh, in Germany. And uh, it's so close and, and yet so far away, <laughs> the language. Um, yeah. but, um, but, but it's nice because little words sort of creep up here and there, and I see the, the parallel, and, and, I, and I love it. The, uh, I was wondering if it wouldn't be too much trouble. Could I, could I make a request for yeah. when I'm gone? Uh, you, you, you can say no. I think I have to say no because I didn't... Um, You can, uh, um, I don't. I, I love the song too much to screw it up, um, and I'm so sorry. But you can play the CD if you want oh, to play the we CD. Could, we could. We could. In fact, you, that'd uh, be fine. You, you can. Me. You can. We'll, we'll lip sync it. You also uh, put out a, a, a <laughs> blues album yeah. for, for my Facebook friends. <laughs> you also put out a blues album. Mm-hmm. Blues is a, is a big interest of mine. Mm. I'm a huge blues fan. Um, your album, Blood Bones in Baltimore. Yeah. So you're you're you grew up in Baltimore. I did, I did, and I actually um, live there now as well. Oh, um, I'm, I'm from where, where in Baltimore did you grow up? Um, a place called Pikesville. I knew it was going to be Pikesville. <laughs> I bet my mother it was going to be Pikesville. <laughs> of course, she yes. had to take the bet because she knew it was going to be Pikesville, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, um, and, and my, my mom is still um, um, in, in that area as well. Well, she's actually closer now. To, I guess it would be Owings Mills, but, um, yeah, it's... Um, oh, yeah. It was cool. It was I, I, cool. I, I got some friends in Pikesville, of course. Cool. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, that album was, was, was it, I mean, it, it's a blues album. Yes. It's not just, you know, blues sounding. It, it is a blues album. Yes. So, uh, where, and uh, from the other three albums, uh, you know, it, it's a bit of a departure. So, wh- how do you get into that, that mindset to write a blues album? Well, um... You know, as a songwriter, really through time, um, and and as an indie songwriter too, I really kind of can move in directions that are uh, approaching me. And a lot of times, it'll be, you know, artists that I've worked with a um, little bit. I have to say that Butch Morgan was um, um, a bit of an influence. He's a Texas guy, um, um, a woman <clears throat> uh, was doing this. Um, well, a little bit of touring um, with um, uh, Chris Smithers too. Kind of, kind of was like, well, let's kind of move in that direction. And um, and I had some sort of sort of, sort of some straggler songs that had never been recorded that were blues songs. Um, you know, the other thing too is I have a very um, uh, active manager that'll book me at a blues festival and and, and I'll say, you know, well, Terry, I only have three songs, and she'll be like, well, you better write five more. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, it's just a really fun um, medium in that, you know, it, it, if it's working, you never have to say uh, sing here or tap your foot here. It's just, it just pulls the whole room in. And also touring in places where English isn't the first language, everybody gets that, uh, 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 you know, that, that uh, right from the beginning. It just, it's so universal. Um, you don't have to say a word. Do you, do, you have, do you have any trouble fitting what you want to write into blues riffs? Mm-mm. No, I mean the, this the CD that's coming out, Broken Film, is you know well blues is is the one four five chord progression which goes into all the country and the bluegrass and um, and rock you know that's like the core <coughs> formula so um, and then it just branches off from that um, if I'm I just kind of really I let it kind of take me where where it wants to blue when a song sort of wants to come it you just go with it you know just you're hunched over your guitar and leaning over a piece of paper I'm very analog in my my songwriting process and um 
yeah, I just I just just go with it. So who you know? who are the who are the blues artists that that you like? Well, the, uh, as far as new artists goes, I like I like. Um, no, let's go old, old. Oh, let's be really obscure. Okay, well, well, well I'm showing off right now. Okay, well, of course, um, Robert, um, um, Robert Jones, um, and Muddy Waters, and um, um, Elizabeth Cotton, and um, um, Willie Willie Dixon, probably a whole whole lot. I know he's kind of like a bridge. You know, into sort oh, of so pop you're, stuff. You're, you're more of the Delta, and not not the Chicago. Yeah, definitely, definitely more Me the too. Delta. Me um, too. Um, and I just love it. Like I went to um, Roy Bookbinder did a really cool uh, kind of communication about the blues one time, and they were talking about like you know like where they're, where they're like they're like like where they're slapping the guitar and everything like that, and that's just like it's just like Mama, you know, it's just like you're just like right on it instead of. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's very immediate. It's you live it. You're like in it. It's just, I just really, really love the spontaneity. I think that's of it. something that the the Delta and Texas blues have that uh, got lost in in post war Chicago blues. Yeah, yeah, and also I guess the book too. Like their eyes were watching God. Some of the mm -hmm. um, great writers. Um, um, African American. You know, female. Zora Neale Hurston was very good friends with Alan Lomax. <sighs> Makes perfect sense. I did not know that. That's yeah. very. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like it's just it's so right there. I really really love that. And I and yeah yeah. It's just like it's not it's not a, it's not the the baloney, <laughs> you know. And I guess that's why I was really drawn to Phil Oaks too because that's what I really loved about him is it was that he was really real. I mean, to his own demise, horrible, and to his own freaking death. But he never um, he stayed true. You know, he stayed true to himself, and I I, I so respect that. Yeah, uh, though, <laughs> it was that not, um, I, I think that maybe the part of the tragedy is there's a difference between staying true to yourself and just being, and pushing people away. Yeah. He, he burned a lot of bridges. Yeah, yeah, he burned them all. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and there was no place else to go. But you know what? He wanted to, it's like the purest gold burns in the hottest fires. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted to, oh, he yeah. didn't care. <laughs> no. I mean, he was just like, this is, I want to see what's going to, what's going to come out of this regardless, you know. And he was so, he felt so alone. And I think, I think he wrote in his loneliness and in that darkness. And he, he, you know, he found just enough light to write. <laughs> Um, and and it, 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 he's he, one of those guys who makes you ask that question. You know, does does something need to be wrong to write like that? Right. You know, him and Hemingway. Yeah. And well, you know, name th throw a rock, you'll you'll hit five five yeah. guys like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You gotta. Um, yeah. You gotta get to the other side a little bit. You know, you gotta let the light in. It's nothing wrong with that. You know, especially when it, in a room. You know. Like, um, I don't know, just sharing the human, ex human experience. I guess we all sort of vibrate to different tones, and that's why different people tune into us. But, well, yeah. You are playing a show later tonight mm. here in Greenville. Yes. And uh, the, I know um, there was a good response I heard back from the, the hosts, so we're yeah. looking forward to that. And could, would you play another song for us? I will, I will. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is WZMB Greenville 91.3 on your FM dial free format for Eastern Carolina. On Feature Friday, we have special guest singer-songwriter Sonia, who is in town for a show tonight, and she will be playing for us. On a train from Amsterdam to Leiden I can see the farmland and the sky I will be the tulips in your garden Till I am the garden going by My little sister Jane, so young yet so wise Came before me on our wedding day And the gift she gave was better than McDonald's french fries All she said, all she said 
James gonna have a baby I'm the aunt that's a luxury I'll get to teach guitar And give him candy And probably leave the diaper changes to Nancy Cause the chases I've been changing Numbers that consume me I can't promise to quit racing Hop in lane to train to plane Making suitcase movies Stay awake It all goes by So song to Micah, Zach, and Dylan, and you, and you, and you, to stay above the gossip and the ruin, water your soul, and you'll keep blooming, stay Sonia here live at the WZMB studios. My name is Ari Goldberg here on Feature Friday, WZMB Greenville, 91.3. Could you, could you tell us about that song? That sounded very personal. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, um, well, I wrote it when I was starting to write. It was on a train from Amsterdam down to Leiden. I have very good friends that live in Leiden and um, love being in, in, in Holland. And um, just reflective, you know, those train rides sometimes make you when you're looking out the window and there's a large expanse of land and sky and then you're going into this really urban place. And it's really just a moving song, um, but it's true. My, my, um, my, half, my half-sister, Jane, said that to, to us right before we got married. Um, that um, she had just gotten married the, the year before and said, it's going to go by so fast, just like... Just like really stay awake for it because it's going to be like a zip, and and I just it just kept it just kept coming that that line just those words uh, wisdom <laughs> just kept coming back and it was just so applicable to so many things in the movement and uh, yeah at times when I do it um, I've sung it and, and of course it's it's another one from the new CD um, it's incredibly sad you know and then sometimes it just feels good. Um, I like sad songs. <laughs> so um, yeah, it can um, it, it'll it'll follow you where you are. I think. Uh, just uh, to to go back a bit on your on the that album Blood uh, Blood Bones and, and and Baltimore the blues yeah. album mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. called it the pinkest blues. <laughs> what does what does that mean the pinkest blues? <laughs> well, um, you know people tell me I smile I smile a lot. Uh, like do you ever sound something? I'm like yes. You know. Um, I, I think because it sort of gives it a feminine uh, aspect to it, it gives it a uh, 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 a socialist aspect to it. Uh, it gives it a fashion aspect, um, 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 like perhaps a you know aspect. sexy aspect. <laughs> Pink is a very great color, mm-hmm. so um, it's just all of those things that you can that you can think of really. And in fact, even the the juice I'm drinking right now is pinkish, so <laughs> all good. Yeah. Wow. 
that I paint. I paint as well. So sometimes oh. those the the things get stuck, and I forget what medium medium I'm in. <laughs> and um, and 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 that's sort of the beauty of it. You know, it's sort of like you let it write you the song, and that's a c- clear example of that. I like that. Uh, I, I like that one. The pinkest, the pinkest blues get that. Uh, you know, a little, a little reclaiming for uh, of of the blues. From the yeah. Old, from the, so um, you didn't you didn't say it for for the new people, um, the new the new blues artists. I did. Um, I like. Um, I like. I didn't mention them. I like David Jacob Strain a lot. I mm-hmm. think he. Um, I've. I've known him like back when he was just when he was still at Stanford, and um, deciding you know what he was going to do. And I. I know he d- decided to drop out and, and do it full time. Um, I. I like what he does. I like his influences. Um, I like um, Christina Olsen. Um, she spends a whole lot of time. She's from Santa Monica. Spends a whole lot of time in in Australia these days. Um, Diane Davidson was on Alligator at a time. She was like, uh, I, I I saw a concert of hers and it's like I'm not going to do anything but the blues ap- after um, watching her. And there's huh. some you know there's some families from um, Alabama. I got to see a lot of cool stuff when I did the Blues to Bop Festival in Lugano, Switzerland, a couple years ago. And they're just I, they have good a, stuff. They have a- Blues festival in in Switzerland. Yeah, in Lugano. Yeah, That's it's, it's in the Alps, right where the where the water is, in uh, the lake. I guess it's the lake, Lake Lugano. Um, uh, it's so nice. It's a Memorial Day. No, no, no. It's a. It's usually Labor Day weekend, um, and it's free, and it's outside, and the stages are great. And I didn't really speak much Italian, so I would speak to the sound people in Spanish, <laughs> and, and and that worked. So That's, that's cool. It's it's always amazing when you hear because. The blues is, you know, it's like the blues and, and jazz are, are really, you know, the, those two really incredibly American uh, music, mm-hmm. music styles. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're, we're still pretty young, so we don't have all that much that's just for ourselves. So it's really, uh, and, and, you know, jazz has gotten worldwide and it's gotten worldwide for as long as it's been, you know, it, it was, you know, Django Reinhardt's from, from France. Uh, but the, it, it's fun for me to see when the blues is, is gets... Is someplace is someplace out of America, someplace I wouldn't expect to find it. Yes, yes. So, so we have to do a blues song then, right? Yes, we have okay. to do a blues song. But first, I have to tune this because that E string is going to drive me crazy. All right. Well, then I'll I'll I'll, I'll fill in. I'll okay. fill in. I'm a I'm a DJ. I think that's what they train me to do. <laughs> Can you come tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, if you if you like cat skills, we can do some cat skills jokes. <laughs> you know, nobody nobody in the listening area is but, understanding what's going but, on. But I will love it. Thank, love thankfully, it. we stream. We'll do the we'll do the one we did at Kuch, Kuchner's. You know what I'm saying? Oh, of course. <laughs> Bush, it's Bush Belt 2013. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Cannot convince you I'm not gonna try
like it twice You like another baby Or you like your nice I've got something Yes I do That you might Wanna know Wanna know I've got the with the pinkest blues that was biggest baddest heart from the album blood bones and baltimore played on her very own line of guitar how do you ah oh, that's amazing a very a, your own line of guitar <laughs> it's well, a it's a sweet guitar i mean it's a kind of guitar you know it's not going to be one of those garth brooks or, or pete townsend bang em up guitars pete i think actually owns one of these i don't know about garth but really? um yeah if you go on the santa cruz website and you see like artists like there are gazillions of people that like even jerry garcia had a, had a santa cruz they're really special guitars i mean like you think acoustic guitars are like you know this is not a dreadnought either this is a small body this is um you know i said robert jones i meant robert johnson can we go can we like <laughs> Robert Johnson, of, uh, the, the, the Robert Johnson, the, who sold his soul to the, of selling his soul to the devil, fame. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said, I play a lot, like some Robert Johnsons. like come to my kitchen, mama, and like all that. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. Um, so uh, that's that what I meant be, before. That would, be, that would be Robert Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Um, he um, he played the, a guitar that's um, like no man. He sold similar. for for those of you who don't know the story. Robert Johnson sold soul to the devil at the crossroads in Mississippi plays that guitar like no man before and no man ever has if you ever listen to his old records there it, there are times it really sounds like there are two guitars playing he's awesome it's just it's amazing and and what what makes the story even better it, it is that the people who knew him say that he couldn't play you know he would go up on stage and he just he would bomb and then he went away for six months somewhere in the hinterlands of, of the <laughs> south and he came back and he be, and he was a legend yeah, he became Robert Johnson, and and he died young. Uh, blues history is just filled with it. It's not it's not a history so much as it's really the only only thing I know of where it's it's told entirely in myth. Yes, There's, it's I mean it's hard to pick up any fact in blues <laughs> history, and notwithstanding, I mean part of it's also because you're trying to document black men in the South in the twenties, right. which is hard on its own, but. Robert Johnson is like the Ur myth of the blues. He's the father of the blues, and Definitely. he um, the 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 story goes that he died. Uh, he was he was a ladies' man, and he was in, he got a gig to play a house party, and uh, got a little frisky with with the misses. Yeah, and a jealous husband poisoned his whiskey, and it said that you could hear his screams clear across Louisiana. Wow. Well, yeah, but, I, I I thought there was a um, a knife involved, but I like your version much better. The the problem with Robert Johnson's stories is that Robert is a very common name, and Johnson is a very common name. And right. one of the Robert Johnson scholars recently repudiated all his work because he said he's started to get the feeling that there were three Robert Johnsons, and they've all been just morphed into this one er myth about this you know fantastic man who came out of the you know it, there's um. Uh, like you know the the story about Blind Willie Johnson, how he got blinded is very similar. is It's almost the exact same story as um, Big uh, Big Blind Br Brunzi. Uh, it's just it's you know that they, these stories repeat themselves because it's told almost entirely in myth. It's Br very hard to track down. Bill, Bill, any fact. Big Bill um, Brunzi, that's another wonderful, wonderful, wonderful artist. Uh, got um, a CD of uh, some sort of bootleg, I think, from 1959 or. Or 19, might have been the early 60s in um, Amsterdam that a friend got for me. It's so good, so good. Just sitting in a room um, in a circle, like in the middle of a circle, maybe like, you know, 50, 30, 50 of people or so around them and just just, just singing, you know? Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the, these myths really were made right around um, 19, or the early 60s because um, these blue, the Columbia 
which owned its own has its own blues line, and they owned OK Records, which was okay. a, a race records line. Right. They right. were starting to get um, re released because uh, they became popular again, and so they wrote liner notes. The, the albums all came with liner notes, and the liner notes just told these stories, and they've been told over and over again. And, you know, it, it's, that's how history is born. That's right, that's right. And isn't that what Bob Dylan did on the back of his early album? Sure. <laughs> Singer-songwriter right. bursts onto the Greenwich Village music scene. He does that. That's how he opens his concerts now, too. He, funny. He, there's a voiceover before he comes on. It's like, Bob Dylan, voice of a generation, savior of rock and roll. And he goes on and on about how great he is. I'm sure it's, he wrote it. There's no opening act. <laughs> it's, awesome. just, it's just a recording about, I'm Bob Dylan, and I'm, I'm the greatest thing you've ever beheld. Uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. But, you know, somebody has to be, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hard burden for a man, but he's willing to take it up. <laughs> right, right, right. Wow, well, wow. It's cool. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I, we, you know, I, I know we were very grateful to, that you, get, you could give us a half hour. Uh, totally. I um, was thrilled, too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're heading over back to do some sound check and grab, some, grab a bite right before we, um, we, we get started. So, yeah, we're excited about the concert. And um, also play some peaceful songs in a prayer of peace for um, anybody hurting out there who um, may have been uh, had a hard week or a horrible day. And, you know, uh, because you're from Baltimore, uh, I'm, I'm always very down about Baltimore. So if you'd like to take some time and give a plug for, for, your, for your hometown. Yay, Baltimore! Um, and the Orioles are doing good. They are, they are. I think they're playing the Blue Jays. I don't know if they played them last night. That's a tough team for Baltimore, but we're coming through. Um, come up to Baltimore, come see a game. There's usually tickets. <laughs> you can get tickets in, in Baltimore in the high seats for like eight bucks. I will say Camden Yards, the, the new Camden Yards is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's clean, it's nice. It's not, um, also, you know, first, hoity <laughs> first stadium in the country to have a Mincha minion. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You've got really great facts, Ari. It's a pleasure talking with you. I love it. Just well, you know, do it again. Chief Cohen of Pitt County has got to know where the minion is. Y yes, yes. We'll make that happen. So um, shalom to everybody. Shabbat shalom. And, um, and, and thank you. Thank you, Ari. So on Feature Friday here on WZMB Greenville 91.3 on your FM dial. Free format for Eastern Carolina. We had singer-songwriter Sonia Let's thank her very much for being a part of our programming, and we'll take you right back. But first, we'll lead out from her uh, Phil Oaks cover album. This is Outside of a Small Circle of Friends.